modules. Right. And there are some functionalities like it has a scheduling section in it to schedule certain things that happen on the website. And, but other than that, it's added We can go all day with features. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, I got various clients, and some of them want to be able to sell on online. And so you have the store portal or the store module. Um, how do you go about doing SSL for the different sites? It's much easier in, oh, no, let me back up. Fibo is easier because it does have SSL um, functionality built in a little bit. Um, are you talking about a multi-site portal? I'm talking about multiple sites oh, on one installation. One instance. Okay, so two portals that both need the SSL, so the main name one.com has an HTTPS in front, and then HTTPS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are portal aliases. You, port you, alias you, that you can do that with one site easily, because one site supports a separate portal alias for every portal on there, and at the portal you can control which pages are SSL. But that's the domain. The domain name is found at the portal, and so, so, so. But so what I'm asking is, so have I have two companies, two totally different companies, that want to have SSL, and I have to install the certificate on IIS. But we're both on the same site, on the same IIS site? Yes. Yeah. But, but see, it's not the domain name. Right. Well, and the domain name is tied to IP, and the certificate's actually looking at the IP number. So, so the rest of that doesn't count, doesn't matter. Now, that being said, your, I, your IIS and uh, DNS need to both have different IP numbers for both certificates. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Okay. Right. So, so you, so you have one of the one things for IIS, or per, per certificate SSL. Even if it's a subdomain name, unless well, there's special certificates that handle multiple, but uh, they, they cost more. But uh, they, they have FQ sites in those. Cool. Let, let me let me throw out. You bring up another question here, and a lot of I've asked this actually quite frequently. We talk, and you've heard people talk about having 600, 800 sites on one instance of .net new. I don't recommend that, folks. <laughs> and the person we know that does, doesn't recommend it either. Well, actually, I work with him on it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but uh, even even doing that, when it comes down to two sites on one instance, I don't do that. And there's a couple of reasons. I recommend that you, if you're going to have a production site, you have it on its own instance. But then your modules are, I mean, you get, you're talking a lot of money for modules. No, you're not. It's not necessarily. No, you're not. You're, you're, you're talking more money. Yeah. Yes. Uh, to, uh, some of them are licensed for install, but you're still not talking money for what you're getting. Yes, if you're trying to maximize, if you want to say, okay, I want to buy this module one and use it on all these portals, that, that's a valid approach. And I know a person that has been very successful doing that on, you know, not 600, but 50, 60 sites, this type of thing without any problems. Uh, however, one of the issues you run into and if these sites are simple brochure sites, maybe having a small store or something, okay, you can get away with it. But the instance these people start managing their sites themselves, you're going to run into trouble. Because guess what? There's a new patch that comes out because there's a security issue and it's really serious. You need to put it in, but you can't because it's going to break something. And so now you have all of your sites that are vulnerable because you can't upgrade this one site. Upgrade becomes a nightmare when you have multiple sites on. One thing you have to know, he looks at security first. Okay. <laughs> I have so much fun in security. It's the last place I ever wanted to be and I wind there all the time. But the point simply being... So if somebody wants to do a website with a store and SSL, just install one new... I would store, say that's, 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 that's always my recommendation. It's so much and you know what you do with that, too? If you're worried about costs, I always roll that up into the cost sure. of your I, I'm not the paper. I mean, when it comes down to it, you're talking about if you get a nice skin and you do good work on putting content in and laying it out, and let's say there is some custom functionality that you put in, maybe you have to have it coded by somebody else, maybe you buy a module, you're still talking about an extremely professional site done, and it's not expensive. I mean, no, it's not $200. No, it's not $1,000. It's maybe $2,500 if you've got professionally done graphics. Graphics cost you, okay? Okay. So, you know, 
it's not going to be dirt cheap, mom and pop. I want to do something for five hundred bucks. No, you can't. You can't do what you're trying to do for that, and I don't even recommend it. But on your very first question, you can get a wild card SSL. Yes, you can. Um, right, I understand. Yes. Yes. But then the, it's again it's not the best solution. It's the, yeah. it, it, it comes down, if, if they want to have if they want to have a professional site that says this is me, this is my SSL. You got to have to have one. Of yes. Sir. Um, I have two questions and then I'll just show up and let you guys answer. The first one is, um, how does that network handle um, theming? Um, for example, you have a site and you want the user theme? to... Right, to okay. select a different theme for that same site. Okay. That's number one. Number two, how does it leverage other other technologies, so that, such as Silverlamp? I heard there were a module for Silverlamp. Okay, theming... How, theme, let, let me see if I can answer theming and then I'll let you deal with Silverlamp. Theming is really in Dr. Nuke's scheme. Okay? Okay, so you, you, would, you would let the user, for example, you spoke about user profile. Um, let's say I have user A, their profile would have this skin. You would apply this skin for them. And you well, would okay, let me talk about user for a specific portal or for a specific No, portal. just one site. One, one site, site, different theming for, for that site. Oh, in other words, uh, I come in and I want it to look this way, and he comes in and he wants to look in another well, way. Well, yeah, I want all my colors to be blue, for example. Simple example. Okay, and that, and that is the user um, red. Uh, th that actually one of the thing, one of the widgets, the same widgets that are doing that. Well, uh, I guess I'll take this question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that actually, um, well, there, there's two ways to look at this because one thing is just how it looks, right? Okay. So uh, the, you can do that. There's, uh, I think, there's four different ways that you can change the skin dynamically on the site as it loads, even if the page says, I have this skin and this container, all right? And so you're really looking at uh, a handler of some kind, maybe a module, it depends on how, what functionality you need, to be able to dynamically change that on page load before the page renders that on the browser. Okay, so you sent them the different CSS and everything, all right? So that can be done, yes. Uh, it's not a default functionality of done new. That being said, there's another, whole form of theming, like, you know, uh, like some of these pages, they, uh, like a Google Start page or whatever, uh, you'd be able to, like, move things around, and it's like that every time we come to it. Can't do that yet. However, what, uh, uh, what the uh, new core teams right now is doing is they're, they've already set up the requirements, but they're going to be implementing the social networking, some social networking uh, features, and that's going to be one of them, being able to move things around. So, uh, well, supposedly, we'll see what happens. <laughs> what happens. But, uh, but, so uh, to that, do that programmatically, I would look at the user context, for example, like, um, and yeah, and yeah, profile. Yeah, that, you, you can store all that information. You just uh, uh, you would need you know requirements is really going to determine whether it becomes a module, or whether it becomes something else, a how widget, it's managed. A widget can do that. A widget can do that, but there's still needs information of which. Yeah. So you have to store the information. Yeah. But uh, so you have to weigh out like what features you need, and then that will tell you how you implement the duck and Nick, whether it's. It's not a default. It, it, right. it, for each individual that logs in, it is not a default. It's, it's not built into the back. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Silverlight. Silverlight. Okay. You <laughs> <laughs> I was just I was gonna point them after a couple of blobs. Go ahead. Well, no, but that's what I was gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's start with let's let's broaden it out from Silverlight to uh, to Ajax. I would definitely go look at John Henning's blog. Uh, John, there is a, uh, he actually has a template out now that allows you to create an Ajax module that has all the hooks to send data back and forth to the server under the hood, all of the, it's, it's a, I mean, you go and say, I want to create, I want to create an Ajax module, and it puts it all out there for you. So that, that's good. Silverlight is a follow-up to that. Um, I'm trying to remember. Uh, I guess who's the best? One? Michael Washington. Washington. Uh, Michael Washington. Every time a new technology comes out of some guy. kind, some shape or form, Michael Washington is the person to look to. He'll he'll immediately. He, uh, I don't know whether they ask him to or he just. Okay, that that's what I was thinking about. Yeah. Okay. He has a bunch of Silverlight tutorials on his website and on the Dundee Nick blogs that he blogs on regularly. Uh, so if you're looking at implementing Silverlight into a module, that's the first thing you'll look for. Uh, Michael Washington knows pretty much everything about Silverlight integration with Duke, and he does a great job of 
posting free models for you to look and see 